We were just working on some of the built-in buttonholes that come with the Singer Heavy Duty 4411 sewing machine. But now it's time to actually sew a button on, and I'm always excited when I see a blue foot in with the accessories that come with the machines. So this is the foot that we use for sewing on buttons. So how do we set this up? Once you see how we do this, you'll never have to sew a button on by hand that has the traditional two or four holes. Now we can't sew a button on with a machine that has the shank on the back side. That is a by hand feature. Haven't found a machine that can do that. So here we are. First off, I've got my buttonhole foot still on, so we'll just tap the little lever in the back and pull it off. Next, the foot has the blue little toes. They are gonna be facing us, so make sure you don't get it on backwards. Get it on with those toes where it will grip the button that we're going to be sewing on. The next thing that you wanna do, we're gonna be using a zigzag stitch, and does it matter the stitch length? It doesn't, because we're gonna take and lower the feed dogs. Now, once you lower these, you sew buttons on and you leave your machine, you might forget that those feed dogs were down. So make it yourself a little sticky note to bring these feed dogs back up when you're done, something to remind yourself. You're gonna slide that accessory box off because on the back side here, there is a lever. Peek your head behind there. I'm gonna take the lever to the right and push hard. There, I heard a little click. Those are the teeth going down. Now do keep in mind when you do bring them back, they don't come up until you actually take a stitch, whether you sew or turn the hand wheel by hand. So I'm gonna push it back so they stay down. And by staying down, that means the zigzag's just gonna go back and forth in the same hole. Now you ask, well, why can't we just turn this to zero? Which you can. The only thing is those feed dogs are gonna come up and tap my button, which I don't want it to. I want it to not be interfered with. And I just need the zigzag to go back and forth. Okay. Next, oh my goodness, what width is that button? Which, what width is any button actually? So tell you the truth, between three and four stitch width is traditionally most buttonhole eyes. Now there are some funky ones out there that are specialty. They might take a little bigger, wider stitch width or a little narrower if they're little tiny ones. But all in all, if you set this to about three and a half to four, watch this. So first off, you kind of can notice the needle is over on the right side. So I'm just moving the button so the needle can kind of come down into that right hole. And don't forget to lower the presser foot. Now it didn't look like we needed to, but you must engage it. Of course, that puts all the tensions in, in charge and, and activated, um, but, uh, and it won't sew very well if you don't. But now the foot is actually holding the button in place. We're gonna take one full swing of the needle to make sure that that stitch with the four that I just mentioned that you should set it at um, lines up in that second hole. Now, if the needle was over on the left side first, obviously align it up with the left needle hole and then swing it to the right. So let's just go ahead, however many stitches you want. And then this is a four holer. So did you notice I actually usually, I tend to do the front two first and then I'm gonna just lift the foot, bring the uh, button towards me and test. One test, two test, oh yeah, we're on and done. Okay, and that's all we need. Now some of you might know the little trick of putting a little fray check on those threads, it's like a fabric glue that dries clear, and then that button will never come undone ever again. Don't forget to bring those feed dogs back up.